State of the Watch Collection 2022, guys. It's already upon us. Guys, if you want to check out last year's State of the Watch Collection and see me in a silly Santa hat, link right there, guys. Check it out. But check it out after this video if you could. That would be a really huge favor. But this year, I'm actually going to share with you my top five ranked in order dive style watches. And then I'll show you the rest of my dive style watch collection. And then in part two, which will be a separate video, I will show you guys the rest of my collection. Also, if you haven't already, please click that like button and also hit that subscribe button. That is going to be the best and most charitable way to help support the channel. So I thank you ahead of time. Also, uh, I'm going to show you guys what's on the wrist today. And that is a pilot's watch. Not just any pilot watch. This pilot watch is one that I built myself, guys. Yes, this is from the DIY Watch Club, and it has the Average Joe Watch Reviews custom rotor that I installed. Guys, I've never done watch modding or taken a watch apart or anything like that before. Doing three of these kits already has already given me the confidence to start watch modding, fix watches, thanks to DIY guys. <laughs> Feel free to just check out the link down below. There's no obligation to purchase, but just check it out and see for yourselves if there's anything there that you like. So with no further ado, let's just dive into the State of the Watch collection. Oh yeah. All right, so the first segment of this video is ranking my dive collection one through five. You can also say dive style because one of these watches is technically not a diver. So let's just dive, no pun intended, right into number one, which is the Breitling Headwind. Yes, this watch is an oldie but goodie, just like that saying is, right? So this watch was actually produced in June 2003. And the reason why I know this is because I was able to take the bracelet off and right along the... Uh, edge of the case uh, right in between the lugs there's a code 2503 that means 25th week of 2003 which actually indicates June of 2003 so why do I love this watch so much well I think because first of all stylistically I think this watch has held its own and in my eyes, this watch doesn't look like a 20-year-old watch. Bottom line, I think this watch has really, the design of it has really stayed relevant and it still looks classic. And I, I just love the day-date complication on this watch. I think it just um, really gives this watch a multi-dimensional look and feel of this watch because it's sporty yet classy and you can wear this with a suit and tie or you can wear this uh, diving it's a, this is chronometer certified and this watch actually was just serviced uh, about a year ago and i actually have a video of that you could check that out right here everything about this watch from the solid silver dial um, and then you could see all the lettering through the black that's on top of the dial. And so it's kind of like that negative space. And when you go and put this watch through different, so you could see how that the lettering actually just shines in that light. It's really a very unique uh, looking watch because typically when you have lettering it's usually printed on but actually the printing is actually everything else but the lettering but also these indices as well um, the the railroad track that you see here on the outer uh, edge of the dial here just really really unique um, you also get a solid gold brightling um, logo right there as well uh, the clicks on this is just outstanding. You've got these rider tabs, which actually helps to protect the crystal, which is that anti-reflective crystal. You can see that blue tinge. 
And for me, the other star of the show is this bracelet, which is absolutely awesome. You get a five link pilot style bracelet and it is just a quality piece. I love this piece. I really do guys. It's staying in my collection forever and um, that's why it's number one. All right. So number two is a watch that you guys probably would think that it's obvious, right? So let's just dive into it. It is the Longines Conquest, guys. Hydro Conquest, actually. I traded the Conquest for the Hydro Conquest, and this actually comes in at number two. Yes, I know you guys thought I was going to go for the Tudor, but I must admit that this watch gets a lot of wrist time, and this watch has impressed me so much more than I actually expected. And quite frankly, I would actually trade the Tudor or sell the Tudor before I would sell this one. First and foremost, uh, we got a ceramic bezel here. The movement of this crown is silky smooth. Winding this movement, you can't even hear it. You can't feel it. It's just, it feels like quality. I love the gold hands, how it just contrasts up against the blue sunray dial. And this is just a stunning piece. This also does come with the two-tone bracelet. I have it on the rubber strap now, and um, it's just such a versatile piece. And the clicks are absolutely solid. Um, man, I mean, the, the dial is very clean. This is a stunning looking watch in person. The finishing is outstanding. I just, I'm so impressed by this watch at this price point. It's just, um, I'll tell you, this watch has really grown on me in such a short period of time that it actually has edged out the, the Tudor Black Bay GMT. So there you go there, guys. Big, big surprise, right? Uh, also, the loom on this is excellent as well, using that BGW9. All right, so... What's number three? Well, I think I kind of said it. It is indeed the Tudor Black Bay GMT. So yeah, it is not a diver because it does have the bi-directional bezel. It doesn't have the uh, illuminated pip. But at the end of the day, guys, you can go in the pool with this. You can go diving with it. This is 660 feet of water resistance, which is absolutely plenty of water resistance and is dive respect i mean if you don't believe me well i have here a patty that is 200 meters of water resistant and this is indeed a diver professional diver association um watch here i mean this one here is definitely uh certified as a diver so and this is 660 feet so there you go um but it, this is just a beautiful watch, very classic. I love the rivets on the bracelet. This this is a scratch magnet bracelet for sure. Um, I'll tell you, using these ceramic bearings here really is just something that you have to feel to appreciate. I love how they incorporate that Tudor uh, shield there, but again, just a really classic looking watch. Um, very smooth with the winding. It is that true jump hour GMT. You can go back and forth, no problem. Um, everything just works on this watch extremely, extremely well. Um, some of my gripes would be I wish it had a little bit better AR coding. When you look at the long jeans, for instance, this thing doesn't have a bad angle. I love how they do. I think this is the best AR coded watch, even over the Omega, that I actually sold um, this year, which is why it's missing in the collection that you see here. Um, so I wish they did a little bit more AR. I wish it was a little thinner. I wish it was a little bit smaller even. Um, it's just a really big watch, guys. So um, I actually would be open to uh, selling this one and just waiting for Tudor to come out with a just a smaller version of this, maybe even with a ceramic uh, bezel i don't mind the aluminium bezel with this it's as much as i mind 
everything else about this. So uh, it's a chunky monkey, and it's just um, I just wish it was a little thinner and just wore a little smaller. So, but at the end of the day, it's a beautiful watch. It's a very classic look, and um, it's definitely uh, worthy of number three in the collection. All right, so we move on to number four, and that would be, yes, the Tissot Sea Star. This one is a 1,000 meters, or should I say a 1,000 feet water resistant, and it's a stunner, guys. It's a gray dial, sunburst dial there with the gray ceramic, and um, it's a beautiful watch, guys. It really is. It's got the Powermatic 80, so you're going to get yourself... 80 hours of power reserve. You're going to get 70 hours out of this one. And you're even going to get 70 hours out of this one as well, guys. So a lot of power reserve here um, amongst this collection here. Uh, the clicks are actually really good with no backplay, actually. Um, this, just uh, the watch in general, Just I, I like the design of it. The thick fence post hands, that T counterbalance. Uh, things I don't like about it, uh, you can see the two peeking out of that window. Um, that peeks out no matter what the time is. It's just a little bit of a flaw that Tissot has, an alignment issue with all of their Sea Stars, actually. Um, so that's a bit of a, an annoyance, a QC issue. Uh, the other annoyance I had was this is actually the second watch I received. The first one arrived where it would just stop working. Um, Again, I'm not so sure it was a Tissot issue as it could have been just a shipping issue, but that was just annoying. Um, and besides that, yeah, the bracelet, it's a nice bracelet, guys. You know, you do get a true mill clasp. You get the fold over and everything. Uh, you also get the quick deployment, or should I say the quick release. Um, I'm just not a fan of polished links in the center. I think if this was all brushed... Um, I would have liked that a lot better. And also the fact that it's a 21 millimeter width uh, lug width really sucks because it really is hard to find a bracelet for this watch or a strap. Um, I actually do pair it with this rubber strap that I actually currently have on my Hamilton. But um, overall, great watch, guys, especially for the price tag. So this one is number four. And, of course, we've got number five, and this one is my official vacation watch, man. Anytime I'm going to go out on the water or have just go on vacation or I just want a fun, colorful watch, man, this is the one I pick every time, guys. And it's just such a unique piece because dimension-wise, it's a 42, but because of the way that the case is uh, constructed, it actually is like concave. It actually is wide at the bottom and it starts to thin out. So it actually wears somewhere around a 39 millimeter, I would say. It actually does wear smaller indeed. And I'm gonna show it to you real quick here um, on my seven inch wrist. There it is. Just a really cool watch. But I mean, does that look like a 42 to you guys? Absolutely not, right? And I think the lugs actually help with that, that illusion as well. Uh, because this is the Ira Kanji, look how sharp and stubby these lugs are. That really does help, right? Bezel action is absolutely incredible with this one. It's 120 click. I know some of you guys out there hate that. I like the way it sounds. It does feel good. There is a little bit of back play. Luminous isn't the greatest. Um, I definitely would like to improve on that. And I would have loved to see some anti-reflective coating on this as well. Um, so hopefully when 2.0 comes out, um, he can improve on that. I do love the fact that you can get the crown at 10 o'clock. That is so cool. Um, just a really cool watch, guys. So this one is definitely worthy of number five, the MAS Irakanji. All right, so that takes care of my top five. So how about some runners up? Um, look, when you have a top five, guys, there's only five positions, right? And it doesn't mean that the others aren't worthy. It's just you only have five, right? So 
Coming in at number six is technically, this is a stretch because it is technically a diver. It is a compressor, compressor style. It is a GMT as well. And that is my Hamilton Khaki Navy GMT done in rose gold. It's a beautiful watch, guys. A little large at a 44 millimeter in case diameter. Um, this watch could definitely use some anti-reflective glass, but um, it's just such a cool watch because it does so many things. I mean, you can use it as a diver, as you can see here. Again, the issue is, though, um, you don't have the loom uh, for the pips. So you're not going to be able to do much in underwater with this, but it does have that 660 feet of water resistance, and your GMT is actually this this little uh, disc right here uh, where it says T2 at your time zone 2 and as you can see it is indeed 525 army time because that is a 24 hour but man a lot of reflection in this glass but um, it's still a cool unique watch I love pairing it with this uh, straps co strap here rubber and um, I think it looks great on that strap, by the way. I just, I really love it. So there you go. I would say this is number six. All right. So if I have to pick a number seven, I would probably go with the Seiko Patty Turtle, guys. Yeah. This is definitely a beach watch. Uh, I wore this to the beach this year, actually, and, um, you know, had it in the sand and the ocean, and, you know, it does its job. It's a very capable watch. As I said, it's PADI certified. This is an official diver's watch. Uh, beautiful coloring with the red, white, and blue, and uh, it's a good size, and it wears well on the wrist, and it's just, man, it's just one of those classic Seikos that... Um, it's not leaving a collection, guys. I just have to say. All right. Um, after that, I really can't go in any particular order. Um, I guess the next one I would probably say I wear is definitely between this one and this one. Now, this is the Seiko 5 Sports. This is done with some rose gold elements. I do have it on a sail claw strap from Artem, and I'll tell you, obviously this is a Blanc Pond 50 Fathoms homage, right? But it's definitely got its own personality, its own um, look to it. Uh, we do have that mineral crystal, as you can see, there's a scratch there in the center. You do get a mineral crystal on the outside too on the bezel little bit of that spongy feel a lot of back play luminescence is good no hand winding no screw down crown and the water resistance is definitely weak at 100 meters which is 330 feet speaking of a diver that's really not a diver even though you do get the loom pip and you get that unidirectional um, bezel this watch is only 50 meters of water resistance, guys. No screw down crown. It does it does hand wind. It is an acrylic crystal. This is really a dive style watch. And to be quite honest with you, this Tudor is more of a diver than this Timex, just for water resistance alone. Um, but again, it's a cool watch, guys. It's the bat. It's the Batman. It's the masked Marvel. Um, exhibition case back really cool hair pulling um, bracelet here not a strap monster because as you can see it's got a very unique way of uh, integrating into the case there but just a cool piece yeah overpriced absolutely um, but it's a classic and um, you know, it's your Q Timex, and it's got that 78 vibe, 1978. So there you go. All right. Um, another one I wear pretty often would be this Luminox. Yes. 60-click um, bezel. Um, it's just a cool blackout watch. This is the only easy day was yesterday watch. And you could see that right there on 
the inside there. Again, another watch that could benefit from some anti-reflective coating. This is a pretty deep dish watch, as you can see. You've got that Swiss quartz movement, and you can see that second hand. There you go. The second hand is actually at the three o'clock position. Um, this is actually like a stainless backing here. Uh, this is like a carbonox. Uh, they call it here carbon composite. This is 200 meters of water resistance. Um, all tritium tubes here. Uh, next we have SWC. Yes, I mean look at the look at the loom already. Just it's crazy. This is this is the craziest loom I have in my collection, and it's not like I don't have a lot of light going on here, guys. All right, so this is a really cool watch. Um, this is actually the Mark, the Mark series that they have. Again, a really big watch. This one's measuring in, I believe, at a 44, possibly a 46, actually. I mean, crown guards are massive. Um, get some good action with this scallop bezel here. I do have it on some FKM rubber from Straps Co. Um, man, I mean, this is a great watch. I think my biggest complaint is the fact that it's just so large. I had to put it on the rubber because the bracelet just made this watch really unbearable to wear on a daily basis. So at least putting on a strap actually lightens it up and um, it, it makes it feel a little bit um, smaller as well on the wrist. So great watch by um, Swiss Watch Company. Next up we got the Seiko 5, another watch with 100 meters of water resistance. By the way, this one here's got 300 meters at a thousand feet so this is definitely a capable diver indeed all my seiko sports here they all have the 100 meters of water resistance so this one here is essentially your submariner homage no hand winding uh no hacking on this one and this is an aluminium bezel jingly jangly press clasp Classic watch. This is your sea urchin, and um, I almost sold it, but I was like, "Yeah, I like this watch. It's just something about it, you know." And I know that these are kind of collectible, so keeping it in the collection. And um, there you go. This is a gift from Adrian Sales over at Somewhere in Time. This is a beautiful piece. Look at the luminescence on this guy. Wow. Um, again, a little bit of that spongy feel. Um, just a very unique watch. It's your monster. Again, no, actually, this one does have hand winding. So this is one of the one of the only Seiko Sports in my collection that I they do have hand winding. Not a screw down crown, so that's going to hurt the water resistance. We got a hundred meters of water resistance there. Um, day date, excellent loom, as I said. Exhibition case back, um, press clasp, but really nice bracelet though. Great watch, um, it really is. And it wears, wears nicely on the wrist too. Check that out. Cool watch. Wish it had that pip there too. I wish it, wish it had a luminescent pip. Um, don't know why they do that guys, I really don't. And this is my custom Tudor Black Bay Seiko actually. Um, this is a really cool watch made by Case and Dial Brandon he did an excellent job on this watch. You get a screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance. And uh, this one has the Seiko NH35, which means that it does have a ghost position. And the reason why we did that was so that if I wanted to swap out the dials later, it's easier to swap a dial than it is to swap a movement. It does have that red tinted glass there and it's got a loom crown. Um, it just a lot of different things on here that makes this watch a one of a kind and a very special piece indeed. Uh, next up we have the DIY project. Yes, this is the first watch I've ever built and everything is loomed, including the bezel. Great watch guys. I really, um, I really like this watch. Um, just a very unique looking piece. Exhibition case back using that NH movement again. Um, just uh, DIY. If you haven't checked them out yet, 
definitely do so because I have another one here. But this one is the GMT. Again, all loom on the bezel. As you can see there, even got a different color there. The um, got BGW9 and you also got C3. Great, great, great loom on these watches. Again, the uh, this one is the NH34 GMT movement. Great, great, great watches, guys. If you haven't tried out the Hawaii, definitely check them out. I'm going to put a video up here for you to check out how, I don't want to say it's easy to put together, but it's fun. It's fun. Uh, last one on the list is the Skagen, guys. This one is surprisingly good. Um, this is a fun watch. The bezel action on this is really good. Um, again, dive style watch. You obviously you don't have any, you know, uh, numbers on the bezel here. There's no loom on that. Uh, the loom on here is actually pretty decent. Um, for a watch that's under a hundred bucks, this watch is pretty impressive. I mean, even this rubber strap feels really good on the wrist, and it just it feels like a solid watch, guys. It is a quartz watch, but bezel action's great. The loom is above average. The looks on it is just a lot of fun. And um, I don't know, man. It's still it's staying in the collection. It's just one of those summer watches that you just can't you can't get rid of. So there you go, guys. That's my diver collection. Stay tuned because I'm going to then give you guys a look at the rest of my watch collection in another video coming up soon. So thank you so much for watching. Take care of each other. It's always time to be kind to one another. Thank you so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Average Joe Watch Reviews. God bless, my friends.